Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the interwebs. I am Zach. I'm Jacob. And we've got the gang back together again. Today we're going to be talking Star Wars. Similar to our video oh about Marvel's Endgame, we're going to be talking about Star Wars. Uh, a very problematic topic these days. <laughs> it's uh, a little jading, unfortunately. Yes. So we're going to be going over what went wrong, and we're going to be talking about what's next. So to start it off, the big problem that we have with the sequel trilogy is that mm -hmm. it, in a way, rehashed the original trilogy. Yeah. There's a, a very strong empire again. Mm -hmm. There's rebels again. There's a girl on a planet made of sand who's very powerful. <laughs> And very integral to the rebellion. Sound familiar. <laughs> She's got an, an old dude that kind of mentors her. Uh -huh. There's a fly. That boy. old dude dies. Yes. Another old dude dies. <laughs> <laughs> Another big part is the, uh, the lack of cohesion between mm -hmm. the first two movies anyways. In that, you know, Ryan Johnson kind of screwed over J.J. Abrams' vision. Mm -hmm. J.J. Abrams yeah. set up all these questions at the end of The Force Awakens that we were yeah. quite excited for. J.J. Abrams did what he does. He's like, ooh, what's next? Yes. And yeah. YouTube was ramp with, rampant with speculation, and then Ryan Johnson essentially said, yeah. that doesn't matter. I'm doing my own thing. I will never get to know what happened to see through Bio's red arm, and I am upset. There's a comic about it, but it's pretty underwhelming. I want an in film, I guess. <laughs> I want a solo <laughs> film about how C-3PO got his red arm. Um, so, yeah. Ideally, there should have been more of a focused storytelling group. Mm -hmm. Ryan Johnson should not have been allowed to discard what J.J. Abrams set up. I don't know why they let him do that. Yeah. It doesn't make yeah. sense. Completely reset character arcs back to exactly what was happening in the beginning of the first movie. And mm -hmm. you're like, what? For example, um, Finn kind of learns to... Primo. Yeah, he, he learns to dedicate himself to something other than himself. He, he gives himself to the rebellion. He's, he the, sells the most literal way to put it is not to run yes. from, from the bad guys. And then what does he do literally <laughs> in like the first five minutes he's on screen in The Last Jedi? Gotta run away. Yeah, I mean, what, be here. did you learn nothing in the first movie? I mean, come on. Um, and then the, the third thing that we that really have to gripe with is the mishandling of the original trilogy characters. I mean, I know you're not a, a huge OT fan, yeah. But even you can understand, like, it, absolutely. My my personal biggest gripe is, uh, well, Luke died. That was weird. Um, yeah. If, if there's ever a death in a reaction that has me and every single member of my family afterwards going, why did that happen? Uh, that was it. Yeah, I I was kind of puzzled by the choice to kill Luke because they didn't have to. Mm -mm. That really was kind of like the camel that. Uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, I don't think the camel that broke the straw's back would be very impressive. <laughs> but the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me was when Luke died because I hadn't really enjoyed The Last Jedi up until that point, and I, my exact thoughts were, well, at least they didn't kill Luke. Yeah. Cut to a shot of Luke vanishing like Obi-Wan, and I was like, god damn it. Yeah, you know, it's funny, that specific shot, is, it bothers me to this day. It's like, here we go. Ah, oh, this is really pretty. This is peaceful. Oh, I guess he's fine. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on. And he oh, vanished. He's gone. It's, it's just like the bomb detonating like 10 seconds after zero. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. And for me, it, that kind of confirmed that we would never be seeing the big three on screen together, yeah. which puzzles me. It, 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 it leaves me just baffled. I mean, how do you reboot Star Wars and not have Han Solo, Leia, and Luke on screen together? It's it's unfortunate. It like, doesn't not matter. having Luke in the first movie is kind of sucks. Like yeah, I can kind of see how they want, you know, no Jedi versus the the first order yet, but still. And we we give Ryan Johnson a lot of crap, but for that specific problem, you can blame J.J. Abrams just as much. Yeah. Because he did kill Han Solo before he could see Luke. But Leia flying and not dying beautifully in space. Uh, that was a problem. At like a failure to Kylo Ren being able to kill her. Uh, yeah, we're, we're mad about that. Yeah, they had a perfect way to send her off, and they didn't. But generally, they just mishandled the original Shoji characters. And um, along with poor writing and no cohesive story, it doesn't seem like they had a roadmap. They claim they do. Maybe they have some kind of loose roadmap, but as far as like the two films complementing each other, they don't. Yeah. And now we're going to have this third film where it I, I'm guessing it's going to feel like kind of a... like. 
what am I trying to say here? It's, I guess, like, all the roadmaps are of a state made in ten different decades or something. Yeah, or it's going to be like, um, J.J. Abrams is going to try to to retcon some of what happened in The Last Jedi, which retcon some of what happened in The Force Awakens, and that's, yeah. that's a problem. The, like, it's a trilogy. They're not standalone films. They need to flow like one story. It's... It's your basic three-act structure. Lord of the Rings, the Twin Towers. Oh, no, Sam carries the ring. Oh, no, Frodo, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Gandalf is dead, except he'll come back as a ghost, probably. Yeah, which is... Okay, you know what? That's a little... <laughs> that's a little on point. <laughs> but he got... I mean, you know. But, um... Yeah. So, we're gonna move on to what's next now. Mm-hmm. So, episode nine, obviously, is the next stop yeah. of the bus. And what what are your sentiments about episode nine? I would like it to be over. I I want an ending, and something fresh to happen now. Afterwards, yeah, that's not um, probably what Disney wanted you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very jaded. The sorry the the Last Jedi was not good. Almost a travesty in some aspects. Kylo Ren's great. I love him. I hope he has a good arc in the in the final third movie. Definitely. But, yeah, I want it to be done. I kind of I'm I'm mildly curious to see how they tie this up. Uh, you know, the trailer with Palpatine's laugh that has yeah. me intrigued. But I'm the least excited for this film probably as I've been for any Star Wars movie ever. Uh, it's kind of sad, but um, this it is where it is what it is, and and this is where we're at. Um, aside from Episode Nine, they have the Mandalorian launching later this year in 2019. I'm pretty excited for it it looks interesting i trust john favreau and dave filoni uh, i think they can give us some good material um those so i'm are, looking forward to that those are good creators paired to pedro pascal who's oh yeah phenomenal and you know i'm looking forward to it i'm not like insanely hyper about it but i will absolutely be watching it the first day it comes out i think that it's probably the most promising project star wars project that we know about right now yeah you can't you want to count the clone wars i I could make an argument that that is more promising but um and there's a track record at least mm -hmm. but um the mandalorian looks good so we'll be keeping an eye on that we'll definitely watch it when it comes out and then they've announced that there will be a three-year gap between the next uh set of movies and um do you think that's a good choice or do you think it's a bad choice yeah i think uh some nice resets to put some rethinking into maybe the way they approach things or just give people time to flesh out story and character and keep consistency maybe make the the script for the next two movies before we film the first (laughs) (laughs) wouldn't that be a great idea (laughs) yeah i I tend to agree i think that you kind of give everybody a chance to breathe um the star wars fandom is kind of in civil war right now it's it's a mess nobody's really happy um it's it's very much sad. Everyone's that, either unhappy or belligerently happy at the other people. Yeah, it's it's a mess. It's like a it's a it's like that scene in Anchorman where they all get into a fight. <laughs> but um, so the three year gap will allow everybody to breathe. It will hopefully allow them to, like you said, have a firm plan going forward. And I think that they've they've had to have learned something from this oh, almost certainly <laughs> i i just think it's a, in general a good idea to take a step back you and really hope so yeah so hopefully they'll they'll regroup there at uh lucasfilm and they'll, they'll come and give us great star wars for years to come uh there's a rumor that i addressed in a previous video about a possible old republic trilogy um i think that they did say that they'd do something that time period i think that's mm-hmm. officially confirmed but as far as doing Knights of the Old Republic, we don't know. But I don't expect it. Yeah. I don't expect Revan to come out as a film character. No. Uh, what do you think about them just like completely adapting the game into a movie? I'm not a fan. Revan is a blank slate character in Kodor that you can mold. So having somebody make decisions about that and form a, almost a canon to more like 15, 20 year old games. Yeah. That's, I don't really like that idea. It's kind of, it factors into the whole reason why why um, video game movies aren't really successful. It's because video games are all about, you get to choose what you do. It's it's not a movie. It's very much so a, a participatory uh, medium. And yeah. you, especially Kator, you make the choices. You can make one choice and your game will be completely different than had you made a different choice. You can't do that in a movie. Not, at least not in a conventional movie. You can't yeah. do that. You can't have every audience member making a decision. And no. Like a... 
choosing an adventure book at the same time. So I, I've, I agree with you. I don't think Revan can be a film character, at least not a good one, because it will only be one version of Revan, because we all have yeah. our different versions of Revan. And um, a lot of people are going to be unhappy if they don't get their <laughs> Revan. So I think that they should avoid that, and they should just create an original story that is set during the Old Republic. They can take elements from the Old Republic games, like the structure, the political system structure, they could take that, the factions, and that would be fine. But I just don't think that they should verbatim tell the story that the games did. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a bad idea. And I uh, totally agree. The last topic we're going to go over is the reported Ryan Johnson trilogy. What are your feelings about that? Um, I, th- I expect that it will be hot garbage. <laughs> But Ryan Johnson is all about subverting expectations, so maybe he will subvert the garbage expectation. I don't believe it, but maybe he will. I mean, yeah, that that was a good one. But um, I hope that maybe if he's in control of an entire trilogy, it won't. He has his own characters. Yeah, it won't feel like like a like he just destroyed something, which the last Jedi felt like. Cause maybe he, he won't shoehorn things in, and it'll. It'll all flow. Yeah, maybe it'll be cohesive. So mm-hmm. that's... I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. If it were up to me, would I let him do this trilogy after The Last Jedi? No. I would not. <laughs> because Not because not only I didn't like it, but there are a lot of people that are very adverse to the name Ryan Johnson now. <laughs> so I think as a business decision, it's safer mm-hmm. to not let him do that trilogy. And um, going forward, I wouldn't be surprised if it never happens. Yeah. I wonder if they'll sweep it under the rug. It's- I would not be surprised if they end up with like a Ron Howard situation yeah. where somebody more experienced comes in to clean up uh, messy scripts or something. Maybe. Or, or, they'll, or they'll just kind of let it drift into obscurity and we never hear about it again. But uh, if it happens, I hope it will be good. I do not want Star Wars ever to be bad. Mm. I'm not. I, I'm never going to root for Star Wars to be bad. I want it to be good. So if Ryan Johnson shows you happens, I'll want it to be good. Um, so I guess that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, that is what's wrong with Star Wars and what's next for Star Wars. We're going to have a video after this about how we would have fixed Star Wars, what our vision for Star Wars would have been given the 2020 vision is clear that we have. We are going to map out what we would have done with the entire Star Wars uh, universe from 2014 to around 27, maybe 2030. So stay tuned for that. Uh, It's definitely a fun one. We enjoyed making it and uh, we will see you on the next one, folks. I am Zach. I'm Jacob. Bye. Bye.